Hey everyone, before we get into today's video, just wanted to give you another heads up. I have a new podcast out called Creepscast. It basically is just a compilation of weekly videos posted on the channel available in podcast format. If you guys are interested in that and want to listen to creepypastas on the go, go check it out. It's available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and wherever else you get your podcasts. So, if you're interested, go take a look at it. Links are in the description below. And with that, I hope you all enjoy today's story. My collarbones are finally healed and I can type comfortably. So, here goes nothing. My muscle memory feels expired. So, this may be shorter than I would like. I have nothing to complain about, however, because my life was very nearly cut short last November. With the pandemic around, obviously, I was starved for human interaction. So, when my friend invited me to her kid's birthday party at her parents' house, I accepted. It was an hour-long drive up and around the hills, one way. I filled my drive there with my favorite music, and I tried to ignore the smell my engine emitted. I was going to ask a mechanic about it that next week. It was a fine drive, and the party was pleasant. I arrived at 6 p.m., and the kids were put to bed at around 9 p.m. With the kids in bed, and my friend rightfully exhausted. I said goodbye to everyone, and I began to head out. I hugged all of the people, said some see you later phrase, and jumped in my death trap of a car. After brief deliberation, I decided to play some more music instead of podcasts, since I was trying not to drift off into a sleep. It was an hour past my bedtime, and I was eager to get home for the night. Starting down that road, I recognized familiar nighttime landmarks that I hadn't seen since the pandemic had begun. I laughed at myself for taking the turns at a reasonable speed for once, no longer tempting fate with 70 miles per hour on a 40 mile per hour turn. Well, this is where my story really begins. The exposition is complete. About 10 minutes into the drive, I pass through a roundabout to get on the freeway home. It was mostly straight, with some surprising turns that were thankfully well marked. There was a car in front of me, who was obeying the speed limit of 55 miles per hour, and they eventually turned into a small town, allowing me to go the 75 miles per hour that I was used to. The music that I was playing pushed me to go faster, and it helped me sustain my ignorant confidence in my driving ability. Being a delivery driver for a living, I turned off the thinking parts of my brain and let my body do the driving. It knew instinctively how to react when anything happened. Turn signs caused me to take my car out of gear and tap the brake to slow down in time. Going downhill in neutral, I would still pick up speed and my body knew exactly how quickly I could take each turn to feel that adrenaline rush of reckless driving, riding the literal edge of the road for just a cheap thrill. I was 30 minutes away from the town now, and I saw taillights in front of me on that road. It was a green pickup truck, very modest, going the speed limit. I was thankful when they had pulled into the turnout to let me breeze past them. Surprisingly, 
They did not continue driving when I passed them. I watched their headlights, waiting for them to get back on the road, but they never did. My body began to speak without words. It spoke in emotions, chemicals through my brain, and I responded with a speech. We understood each other. Fear. Why? Out of place. Uneasy. Wrong. Mo, it's fine. They're probably taking a breather. Maybe they're a student driver. Calm. Talking to myself has always helped me to process the world around me. So, this was nothing new. But in the back of my mind, the nagging feeling lingered that the unintelligent part of my brain had had a point. Good thing I start therapy soon. My anxiety's getting way out of hand. The driver continued, and I was alone again. A glance in the rearview mirror showed only darkness, so complete that I could swear the glass was painted. And ahead of me, my high beams illuminated a desert and trees on either side of the highway. This did not last forever. My body registered a stimuli and glanced in the rearview mirror once more. This time, spotting two headlights coming around a turn. My body began communicating once more. Fear. Green truck. It's not the green truck. We passed them a while ago. Being chased. Malice. My heart dropped deeper into my chest. No. Danger. Move. Why am I scared? This is a highway. Of, of course, someone would eventually come up behind me. Move. Fast. I resisted the urge to hammer the accelerator. I'm freaking out over nothing. Wrong. Move. The road lurched to the right, and I followed the curve. With the headlights gone behind the curve, my inner monologue ceased for a moment. Yet, the fear lingered. It was nothing to worry about. I was safe. Perhaps I was afraid because the headlights had caught up to me while I was speeding. It did seem unnatural that someone could drive that fast. Maybe they're driving at a similar pace, but they know the road so they take the turns faster and they're saving time for that reason. The road straightened out and my music hammered on. I still felt uneasy and I checked the rearview mirror frequently. Eventually, the lights returned. Danger. Predator coming. Move. Why am I? But then I saw it. The lights were following closer than they were before. He knows you know. Move. What do I know? He equals a predator. He's not even coming any closer. He's maintaining a consistent distance. If he was coming for me, he'd be riding my bumper by now. He knows you know. I stared straight ahead at the road in front of me, concentrating on keeping my breathing even. Fear is a drug, indeed. Just in case, I pushed a little harder on the accelerator. 80 miles per hour, just in case. Left turn ahead, 
I take it, and the lights are obscured once more by the hillside. My breathing gets easier, but the feeling of being pursued, it persists. The road streams out. I begin to count. One, two, three, four, five, six. Boom. Headlights. Move. Oh, relax. Look. Six seconds of distance. Remember that. My body kept insisting that I listen to my flight response, which was now ramping up. My breathing became deeper as my anxiety began mounting even further. Stay calm. Just wait for the next curve. Fifteen more minutes until we get to the town. I got this. Of course I got this. It's just driving ahead of an excited sports car driver. Green truck. Move. Whatever. Road turns right ahead. 35 miles per hour. Move. I take the car out of gear to decelerate. Danger. Move. I apply the brake. Fear. Move. I take the turn, going 60 miles per hour. And soon, my body begins screaming for a different reason. Follow the road. Go. Move. Slow down. Too fast. Slip and slide. Drop. By the time the road straightens out, I'm going 45 miles per hour. Headlights. I check the mirror. Nothing. The headlights are still on the turn. Uh, too late. I begin counting from two. Two. Three. Four. Boom. Headlights. Go. I listen, but the vehicle in low gear and actually floor it. Don't look. Faster. My left hand follows the road, while my right has the shifter and a death grip. My body is doing the driving. 85 miles per hour. Check. I look in the rear view, and the headlights are the same distance as they were before. Matching my speed. He knows. Outrun him. Need to. You're right. He is getting closer. Maybe I'll use a turnout to let him pass. No. Under no circumstances. Not happening. Move. What? I maintain my speed. I passed a turnout. The headlights were closer now. What? What? Go. Move. I hammered the pedal, and the smell of my engine reminded me that this car may quit if I push it too far. Not important. Move. Survive. He knows. Predator. Go. 90 miles per hour. The headlights are still maintaining a consistent distance. 95 miles per hour. The distance has shrunk. Left turn ahead. 25 mile per hour speed limit. Too slow. How do I make the turn then? No. The turn is approaching, as are the headlights. Tailgating is death. He's too fast. Evade. What do I do? Oh, what do I do? Crash into the tree. My eyes lock into a tree straight ahead, past the turn. Turn. Tree. Turn. Tree. Turn. Tree. I check my rear view. The headlights are beneath my rear window. Death. Tree. I listened. 
I glanced down and my speedometer showed that I had kept the gas down 105 miles per hour. I looked back up. The tree was alarmingly closed. My body had nothing left to say. The choice was made. My heart dropped deeper to my chest and the air left my lungs. I wrapped my car around that tree. That night, just minutes from home, I had a devastating accident. People heard the impact from their homes, hidden along the highway. Needless to say, I suffered some injuries. Surprisingly, they weren't plentiful. My collarbones were broken, I got severe whiplash and required a neck brace, and my seatbelt squeezed three of my ribs until they cracked along my left side. All things considered, I did well. I don't know why the instinctual part of my brain insisted that we not get caught by those headlights. It was the most visceral fear that I had felt up until then. The feeling of a tiger stalking towards me, forcing me to walk backward, fighting the urge to run. I knew that I was in danger. Looking back, I can't figure out how I knew that. But I felt in the same way you feel the other person's body during a hug or the hot chocolate slide down your throat after a winter hike. It was almost a sensory, like I could detect the fear as a real entity. Truth be told, I don't know what I would have happened if those lights got to me. They were moving too fast when unseen, and only revealed their true nature once within closing distance. The unconscious region of my brain knew that I could not allow them to reach me, and that wrapping my car around a tree would help me. I don't doubt it either. On the bright side, I never had to take that car to the mechanic to investigate the fumes. I don't think it'll pass smog again.